Hello, everyone. My name is Yujiro Taniyama, and I'm the finalist for the U.S. State Department's Democracy Video Challenge. And today, I'd like to make a quick speech about the territorial disputes in Asian waters, especially the Senkaku Islands, that lies just 170 kilometers off the coast of Okinawa, Japan. In this Washington Times article, it goes like this. The 1969 map produced by the People's Republic of China Map Authority and labeled confidential lists the islands as Senkaku, the Japanese name, and contains a dividing line south of the islands indicating that they fall within Japanese territory. What do you say, ladies and gentlemen? This is 1969. An official map produced by the Chinese government authorities, which says confidential. The Communist Party tried to hide the truth of the Senkaku Islands, that it belongs to Japan, from its own people. That's the fact, ladies and gentlemen. No Chinese, ladies and gentlemen, has ever set their foot upon the Senkaku Islands. They've never lived on those islands. And if you're Chinese, and if you claim that the Senkaku is Yaoyu, the way you call it, and you own the islands, the territory, please, please show me the proof. Please show me the evidence that you people had lived there before. I don't think you can. I don't think you can give me the evidence because the Chinese people, they never have. I'm talking about the fact here, the truth. Whether as we, the Japanese, we have the proof. We lived there over 100 years ago. The photographs, I'm going to show you just in a minute. It is a hard evidence that proves that the Senkaku Islands belongs to Japan. In 1896, Japanese government gave permission to Koga Tatsuro, who was a wealthy businessman from Kyushu, to go to Senkaku, go to the Senkaku, and build fish flake factory there to do a little business. Furthermore, Koga Tatsuro also built the albatross factory. You know those birds? He took the feathers out and sent those high-quality feathers to Europe. And the Europeans made pillows and blankets from the feathers to sleep cozy and comfy in winter. This is a fact. And in these photos, you see, you see a ship coming into the dock the Japanese built in Senkaku. This is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. And at the peak, over 200 Japanese citizens actually lived on this island. There was a community there. And the significant fact I want to point out here is that it was not until 1971 that the Chinese government authorities, they suddenly raised their hand and started claiming sovereignty over Senkaku Islands. Why? Let me tell you why. They claimed sovereignty right after the United Nations Marine Investigation Committee announced that the Senkaku Islands area is potentially oil rich. So I guess you know what this story is all about now. Democracy is all I'm asking for here, ladies and gentlemen. Because where there is democracy, there's, more, there's likely to be more truth and faith. We the Japanese, we're democratic people. We live in a democr democratic society. And the Philippines, the same. The Filipinos are struggling very hard over the sovereignty of the Spratly Islands when the U.S. troops withdrew 
from the Philippines in 1992. It was the Chinese that suddenly came over and stole the Spratly Islands by force. The Vietnamese, they've been struggling too against the Chinese over the sovereignty of the Parcel Archipelago. The Chinese military took over those archipelago by force once again. We have to fight for the truth, for the right of the people, for democracy, not to let the Chinese do whatever they want because the countries are supposed to be equal. We know that the nations should be equal. And that is what democracy is all about. I think you already know, but China is a master of stealing other countries, territories, and a master of fabricating history. If you don't believe me, just go to the nearest DVD store and borrow Brad Pitt's movie, Seven Years in Tibet. Or just go and ask Mr. Richard Gere or Mr. Dalai Lama. The territorial disputes in Asian waters, it's heating up just for one reason. It is because China is not a democratic nation, which does not follow international orders nor international law. But instead, the Chinese government authority, their intention is to turn these Asian territories into Second Tibet and Mongolia. And we, the people of the democratic world, we cannot allow that. We should not allow that to happen. We have to unite. That is why Japan is working closely with the Vietnamese and the Filipinos to bring justice and peace within the region. Thank you very much for watching this long video clip. Democracy is what I value and hopefully what you value as well. Just to remember one thing, ladies and gentlemen, please be careful. Thank you.